Now, importing and exporting has changed enough in ZBrush 2020 where I, I recorded a new video to talk about the functionality. So I'm going to hit the comma key to go into my light box here, and we're going to go into tool. And we're just going to grab this demo soldier. It just has a bunch of sub tools on it. So we're going to hit the comma key to go out of light box mode. And now we have a tool with a bunch of sub tools on it. Now, if I load up another sub tool here, we're going to hit the comma key, and let's say we'll grab the Ryan Kingsline Anatomy model. So we have two tools in here, and between these, we've gone over this uh, in other videos, but we can grab, like, the Demo Soldier has the body subtool selected. So if I go back to the uh, anatomy model, we can go to Insert, and I can grab this Demo Soldier, and that'll kind of pass that tool, that subtool, over to the anatomy one. So I'm going to go over here to Delete. If I go in here to Import, in ZBrush 2020 and beyond, uh, you can actually import everything natively from this menu. You don't used to have to go to... Z plugin. If so, if you see my one of my old videos, you go to Z plugin. 3D Print Hub has an STL import and export. FBX importer has an FBX import and export. That's all just built in. So if you go in here, uh, one important thing to note is if you import anything right now in FBX, uh, it's certainly an OBJ into this uh, selected subtool, it's going to import the OBJ into that selected subtool. That's kind of it's kind of good behavior because what you can do is you can uh, have a demo soldier body, for example, and let's say you don't want to UV master or UV this object in ZBrush. What you can do is, even if this has uh, subdivision history, which it does, you can go down to subdivision level one, you can go over here to export, and you can export this as an OBJ, UV it in an external program, and then import that OBJ into subdivision level one, and as long as you didn't change the vert order, you'll have all of your subdivision level history back and updated UVs. So that's some of the functionality between importing and exporting an OBJ into a subtool. However, if you want to import something just brand new into your ZBrush session, go out of edit mode, say always switch, hit control N, go into simple brush, go into import, see if I have something. Oh good, on my desktop I have an exported FBX. Now the cool thing about FBX, if I go to my demo soldier here, and we're looking at him, he's got a bunch of subtools, uh, he might have some poly paint on him, so if I go into my standard brush here, turn on RGB, we'll go into a color and we'll just paint and sculpt some red. Let's go ahead and alt tap his shirt, turn on color eyes, turn on red. Standard brush RGB turned on, so we can paint and sculpt some color on a shirt here. And then if we go over here to export, right into my desktop, I'm going to change it from OBJ over to FBX. If you do OBJ, it's only going to export the selected subtool. If you do FBX, we'll just save over this demo soldier. It's going to ask you. Do you want to export visible? Do you want to export all? We'll say visible. Go ahead and smooth the normals. We don't need to export any cameras. Hit OK. And X FBX will export all of these things into its own file. So if I go out of edit mode, uh, in fact, just to make it super clear what I'm doing, I'm going to go ahead and say delete all. And then we're going to go in here to our simple brush. We're going to go to import. And because it'll read FBX files natively now, desktop, demo soldier, we're just going to import the objects. We don't need anything selected. So here's our imported file. You're going to notice we have uh, the poly paint is still applied there. All of the subtool names are still there. The only thing we missed out on is the subdivision history. So if you had subdivision history like we had on the body, you have to go through here and you have to reconstruct it. Um, creasing probably won't go through. However, if you go in here to export MA Maya files uh, or use GoZ, it might keep your creasing. Now there is one caveat to exporting an OBJ and not just having it export one subtool. You can go in here to Z plugin and you can say Subtool Master, and if you go to Export in here, this will export all of your OBJs uh, either as a single file or export to different folders for every subtool, or all of your subtools as an OBJ. I personally like the FBX format because it's one file with multiple pieces, so if you took this into Maya, for example, it would be all of these objects in here just imported into Maya, all with their names, all of their vert color information, all that good stuff. So FBX is a pretty good format. Um, STL for STL files, like if you're going back and forth with uh, CAD programs or something, you can import and export those. You can also do multi-append. So like when we were talking about, you know, shuffling one subtool uh, to another, you can actually do, have the anatomy model, model go to multi-append, go into your Zebra, C program files, pixel like ZBrush 2020 Z tools, and then demo soldier. And with multi-append, it's going to append all of the subtools from that Z tool, Demo Soldier Z tool, to the bottom. So there's all the appended uh, soldier stuff. And there's one more thing, and this we go over this in another, uh, the folder videos, but I just want to bring it up here because it's semi-related. You can go in here to the Demo Soldier here. Actually, let's go ahead and just delete all this. That was our FBX. We'll go back into the comma key here. We'll go to Tool, load up that Demo Soldier. 
If we hit W, we can go into a transpose all selected, hold down control shift, unhatch everything, hit control F, and we'll say soldier all. And we'll grab most of the subtools here. We'll hit control F and we'll say yes. There we go. There's most of the things in the folder. Then we can just drag uh, the demo soldier into that one and the goggles into this one. Uh, so now we have a whole folder in here. So now we can go into Subtool Master, Copy Folder, go in here to our anatomy model, say Paste Folder, and it'll paste not only the contents of that folder, but also paste the soldier stuff into a soldier folder, which again, you can just turn off and then just have that sitting there as folder contents. Now, if you ever bring in anything crazy or very different, So I went ahead and imported uh, this file. If you still watch my live streams, you'll you can see the making of this. But I'm going to go down here to Merge Visible. So it's all merged into one file here. I'm going to go into my soldier here, and we're going to go to Append. And you can see this head uh, is. Oops, go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and move off or turn off. Transpose all selected. Uh, the head, I don't know. The head is probably about the right size. Um, but if you ever had something that was like from Marvelous Designer and it was like gigantic, there's a couple different ways you can fix that. You can go down here to deformation. And if you just do a unify, um, that'll unify everything into uh, basically a ZBrush primitive size. Uh, you can also use subtool or um, Z plugin scale master. If you click on this little top part here, it'll walk you through how scale master works. Uh, you can also just click on this here and it'll go to a video on Scale Master. But basically with Scale Master you can set your scene scale and then resize any appended subtools or anything like that to a very specific size. So uh, a lot of times you can eyeball it, but sometimes if you need to be precise, uh, Scale Master will be the way to go. And besides doing Unify, of course, like I was doing, you can go through here and you can scale it down just manually if you needed to uh, do that. And if it was multiple pieces, We go down here to split two similar parts. So now this head is built of, you know, tons and tons of different pieces. Uh, hit W to move multiple. Go in here to transpose all selected. Control shift tap to hash everything. Control shift drag to unhatch what you need to. And then you can just move all of these separate subtools at the same time. Now, when you're importing and exporting for like baking game res stuff, let's go ahead and I'm gonna go to preferences initialize. So here's the file I'm going to bake from. I go into Subtool here. You see I have this broken up into different folders, but what you're also going to see is I have a bunch of different names with underscore high. So what I do is I use baking by namespaces. So every single one of these subtools here has a different color. So I can make easy mass when I say go into Substance Painter, for example, and it's labeled underscore high. So when I go in here to export this, I can export this as an OBX, uh, FBX, sorry. And I'll export this as, say, for example, ape skull underscore high, and I'll have another file, a working game res file, with ape skull underscore low. And it'll have all these separate components, and I can go into Painter and bake that. Like I said before, this will be up on my channel at some point, or my live streams, I talk about this a little bit more in depth. Now, if you do go to File Export, and you export this as an FBX, have Smooth Normals turned on, that'll result in a much smile, smaller file size. If you go in here and you turn on Tries, that will triangulate on export. Uh, for a high, for a game res, you probably don't want to do that because you want to have nice quads that you can go in and change. However, on your high res, if you turn on tries, it'll actually bake faster in, for example, Substance Painter because it doesn't have to triangulate it when it loads it, but it is going to increase your export time. So pick and choose uh, what you want to do, but smooth normals is definitely going to result in a much smaller file size. Now, when you are exporting a bunch of stuff and you're saving these things, you're going to see I have a null. Uh, basically, if I go to insert and this grab, it doesn't really matter, any primitive. As long as you have it at the top here, let's go ahead and delete this one. So this one's Polymesh 3D Arrow. As soon as I go to save this thing as, say save it as test, it's going to replace the name of that subtool as test. So what I'll do is I'll have a null up here to catch the name, and then anything below that uh, will, retain, will remain retain its naming. So when I export this, uh, the names will match up. So anyway, that's some of the new functionality uh, updated in ZBrush 2020.